G'day guys, John here, Chief Instructor with FPV Australia. It's the 7th of February today, 2020. It's a bit windy outside, so there'll be no, no uh, flying today. I wanted to just give you another quick update about the Manual of Standards that's coming. It's, uh, it's rocketing up towards us on the, uh, the 5th of April, 2020 um, and if you don't know what the MOS is I'll give you a little quick history uh, up until this point we've had regulation that uh, that governed how we could fly drones and I'm going to talk commercially in this video I'm not worried about the recreational stuff just just commercially so if you're doing it for hire or reward or or, uh, or that sort of thing so commercial operations up until this point we've had regulation and and uh, and there's been licensing requirements and for sub two kilo had certain requirements and all that sort of stuff but last year, the uh, Civil Aviation Safety Authority implemented the Part 101 Manual of Standards. And what that is, is a document that goes into further detail. And it was implemented on the 5th of April, 2019. And a big chunk of it comes into effect on the 5th of April, 2020. One year after the implementation of the MOS itself. Um, the big chunk of that is aimed at us flight schools. Uh, and I'll, I'll come back to that in a minute. Uh, some of it's aimed at some excluded operations, um, there's some reporting requirements, uh, other bibs and bobs and bits and pieces, and then there's a whole bunch of stuff about aerodromes and where you can and can't fly and, and all that sort of stuff. If you Google CASA Part 101 Manual of Standards, you'll find it. It's a big document, uh, it's got about 11 chapters in it, there's a, a few of them that are blank and reserved for, for, for editions that are coming, um, but it's there. That's, as I say, it, it, the, the big chunk of it that we're all focusing on now is the 5th of April. Uh, 2020, which is what, uh, six weeks from now, today being the 7th of, of February. Um, that's, that's in play, that's coming, and un unless it gets delayed, and I have no indication from the regulator that it's, it's going to be delayed, as of the 5th of April, the way remote pilot license training in this country changes. Um, and uh, uh, to give you a bit of an idea, up until now, the flight schools could sort of work out how they wanted to deliver their training courses uh, on a bit of a loose leash, I guess. Um, for example, there's us, we've, we've started over five years ago training in a five day format where we, it's a full week, face to face, uh, six hours out on the field, all that sort of stuff, a fairly in-depth, I think three, three and a half hour long exam, big exam, um, and, uh, and we've always done it that way and that's great. Then there's been courses where you could self-study online, um, get all the materials, study yourself, turn up uh, with the organisation for one, maybe two days, and get the ticket and off you go. Unfortunately, those days are gone. Well, I think fortunately, I should say, those days are gone. In the MOS, it, it talks about minimum contact time. So there's a minimum of 15 hours on c Category A syllabus items. Now, the syllabus itself has massively expanded. Um, even our manual has um, practically doubled in size from what it was. Um, so there's a lot more content. There's category A, category B, and category C content. The MOS stipulates that we now as a training organization have to spend a minimum of 15 hours face-to-face -face delivering that category A component. Not exams, not practical, not radio, just instruction on the category A aeronautical knowledge components. So. There's two days taken up already. By the time you add the practical, which is another five days worth of flying, you add the radio operator certificate, you add other bibs and bobs and the stuff we do like um, uh, risk assessments and job safety assessments and all that sort of stuff, and the final exam, you can't get it done in two days. It's not possible. F four days, maybe at a stretch, I'm gonna struggle to get all of my content in in five days. And the sting in the tail is the exam is now an 80 question closed book examination. Now I'm not going to sit here and argue about what is the best way to examine an individual. I've got uh, educator credentials and we spent a lot of time uh, during my studies uh, uh, talking about how and, and, and what are the best ways of examining people and understanding um, people's knowledge gaps. I'm not here to talk about that. I'm just going to tell you what's in, in play as far as the MOSS is concerned and that is an 80 question minimum, 80 question, multiple choice closed book exam. The syllabus has increased, so you're going to have to know your topic. You're going to have to know your stuff to get through this 80 question closed book exam, and the pass mark is 85%. Sounds scary, I know, um, but that's what it is. You're going to have to study this material 
to pass. The failure rate's probably gonna go up. But anyway, um, that's what's in play. We've been sort of doing that up until, uh, other than the exam, we've been running a five day course with the content and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, we've got some more content to get through, so that's fine, um, but uh, we've always had the five day course to get through it, and so it's sort of just a little bit of a shift for us, but the, the whole self-study one day courses post April 5, they're gone and we all come up on the same level of standard uh, delivering the content as it is prescribed in the Manual of Standards. And you can go and see all of this. If you Google CASAR, manual, uh, Part 101 manual, manual of Standards, have a look through it. It outlines exactly what is required from us flight schools, the content, the syllabus, the topics, how long's got to be spent doing what. There's five hours required on the field minimum. The practical stuff has even changed. So. Um, Repl training post April 5 um, it, it is different than what it is now. And, and if you're on a course booked into a course post April 5, um, I'd be asking the questions to make sure that it, it is compliant with the MOS. Um, you know, that the, 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 the regulations of the MOS clearly state what is required post April 5 to qualify an individual for a remote pilot's license. If that doesn't get delivered, then I guess you don't qualify for a remote pilot's license. So make sure uh, you uh, the courses you're on are um, MOS compliant. Um, there is some stuff for uh, excluded operators, those that are operating in the small and the medium category. So that's not the sub two kilogram, that's the small and the medium category. Landowners and whatnot. There's some recording requirements now, like information recording and flight logs. If you're not sure and you're one of these organisations and you, you, you're wondering how this is going to affect you, um, please feel free to, to, to get in contact with us and we'll, we'll help you through it. There's uh, instructor requirements. Uh, they'll come into effect in October where instructors have to have a certain amount of hours, time and experience before they're allowed to instruct. Um, there are some stuff that's in play now when it comes to... Um, to um, uh, reporting and changes of, of details for the sub two kilo category. So if you fly sub two kilo, um, there are chapter 11, I think is relating to you. So go and have a look at it. It also identifies two different types of people in the sub two kilo category. One, the person who operates the drone and two, the person who conducts the operation. I know that sounds a bit quirky, but what I think it, it's basically set up for is if I own a real estate agent company and I give my, my employee a drone and say, go take those photos, we're operating in the sub two, kilogram, two kilogram category, excluded. Both these individuals need to be registered. And if any of those details change, they both need to give uh, information back to the regulator. So have a look at that. As I say, if you Google CASA Part 101, Manual of Standards, you'll find it. Or look, send us an email if you like, uh, training at fpvaustralia.com.au. Um, the telephone number, the 1300 number's down here. I, can't remember the 1300 number, it's impossible, but there it is. Um, if you've got any questions, let us know. But um, and, and, and organizations who might be operating drones now and you're thinking, oh, how does this affect me? Get in touch with us, we'll, we'll certainly help you through the minefield. The registration uh, system is still out there in the ether. Um, it's been delayed, but it's still floating around, so we'll probably see it pop up in a little while. Um, yeah, other than that, uh, come April 5, the remote pilot licensing landscape changes. Uh, and as I say, if you're not sure what they are, give us a yell and we will help you out. I hope this video has been informative to you. And if you are flying a drone today, tomorrow, next week or next month, please do so safely and responsibly. We need safe skies for all. Enjoy.